Hey YouTube, I'm CaseyFriday.com. You should know me by now. I wanted to make a video and show you something I just built. This is the O2 headphone amplifier. It's also known as the Objective 2 headphone amplifier. And as you can see here, it's just uh, naked at this point. I have not put it in an enclosure yet. As you can see, and I'm going to put it in an enclosure, but I just have not done it yet. One thing that needs to be done before I do that, is you can see that the uh, AC input is not really flush with the board there, and the legs on this component were too thick to fit through the holes, so I just put a ton of solder in the bottom of that to get them to stay there in case I wanted to use it like this. I do like looking at it like this. I think this is pretty cool, and I think it would be cool to get a translucent case, so um, I just made up my mind with that. I'm gonna get a translucent case. So if you don't know what this is, the Objective 2 headphone amplifier, um, basically there's been a lot of discussion online about which headphone amplifier is best and um, how much money you should spend in order to get something that works well for you. And there are some really well-rated headphone amplifiers for around $1,000 to $1,500. The parts for this, all in all, cost me about $41. So I ordered the majority of the components, um, all of the components actually, except for the batteries, from Mauser Electronics, and then the PCB that was already etched, which is very nice, I got from uh, JDS Labs, I believe is what it's called, and they make fully built O2 amps. They also just supply the PCB, which I thought was nice. It was nine bucks, and um, everything else was from Mauser. You can get whatever volume knob you want, you don't have to have that one. So basically, this is $41 and audiophiles in a blind test could not tell the difference between this amplifier and a thousand dollar amplifier. So I thought, why not make this? And what I'm listening on are my Sennheiser HD 595s. They are incredibly comfortable and they're open ear headphones. So if you see this mesh grill here, the speaker is right in front of that and it's open. So um, when I'm listening to music, people around me can hear what the music is. You can't hear it as loud as, say, a laptop speaker, but it's there's definitely sound leakage, and so it's much more comfortable because there's not a lot of pressure on the inside of your ears. Um, but if you don't want to bother anyone around you, it might not be the best solution for you. But they sound great. These headphones have an impedance of 50 ohms, and that's a pretty low impedance. Uh, basically what that means is it doesn't take much power to get these things uh, to a decent volume. So it's probably not completely necessary to amplify those headphones, but I thought it would be cool anyway just to see if I could get any more sound quality out of them, which when I first put them on is just really impressive. My music right now, I'm re-encoding it right now, but most of it is in 192 kilobits per second AAC that I rip from CDs, and then everything else I buy from Amazon, so that's 256 kilobits per second, and that's MP3s. and. Um, I've done some sound tests because I have, you know, I, I ripped about when I first got my MacBook and switched. Actually, it was before that, but when I first got iTunes, I ripped on my CDs in a lossless format. And I've since done some listening tests. And sad to say, I don't know if it's just that, you know, the headphones aren't high quality enough. They're very high quality, but maybe for the sort of listening test I'm doing, um, I just can't hear a difference between 320 kilobits per second and lossless. Now, when it goes down to 64 kilobits per second, that sounds pretty crappy. I can tell. 128 and 320, I can tell if it's really quiet. I can kind of hear a few things. It's not 100% of the time I can go, oh, you know, this instrument sounds really crappy. Um, so my point is, I, I don't consider myself a true audiophile, but I am a connoisseur of good quality audio. So I do enjoy um, nice audio, and I think that the Sennheiser HD 595s provide quite a bit of that. But I wanted to add an extra touch, so I built this, and basically I just dropped all the part legs through, and you can see I soldered them, and used some flush cutters to get that nice and smooth on the back. I'm not sure if that's going to focus or not. But I built this, and the results, um, those are pretty low impedance, so the results, I wasn't really able to tell too much of a difference. I think it's cool, you know, you turn it on and you can see the light there. And then here you've got an extra 6 dB of gain. If you have really high or yeah, really high impedance headphones, you can add some gain. If not, you can just use the volume knob. And 
it's a really high quality amplifier. There's no hissing, there's no noise when it's uh, when there's no music on. There is a tiny bit of a thump as you turn it off in the headphones, but it just sounds kind of comforting, so it's not too bad. But I'm gonna get some rechargeable batteries for this, and then when you plug in the AC cord there, it will charge the batteries, which is pretty cool. Um, so if anyone out there has built one of these and you have a DAC, which is a digital to analog converter, or you have some other sort of setup and you can really tell a difference, I would love if you would comment either on YouTube or CaseyFriday.com, wherever you're watching this, and tell me what it is you did that let you, that allowed you to hear something differently. And it just might be, like I said, that these headphones are great. Um, I got them for about 180 bucks, and they usually go for 250 or so. But maybe they're just not so ridiculously out of this world high quality that, you know, they sound great, but you can't really do too much to make them sound better. I'm not sure. But if you are a novice um, tinkerer or hacker or just want to do something fun, this is a really fun project. It probably took me about three to four hours to get everything soldered, and that was just because I don't have all the right materials. I do have a Weller um, soldering iron, but I don't have, you know, like clamps and whatnot to hold this in place. I did have a static wrist uh, bracelet to wear to keep this all, keep me grounded with the circuit, but... Um, Basically, you put your input in here, and this comes from either your laptop or your iPod, line out, whatever you want to do. And then here's your volume knob, here's your LED that shows the power is on, and then uh, this is your output to the headphone, and this is the power switch. So I think it looks pretty cool, like I said, just like this, but I will get a translucent case for it at some point soon, just to make it look extra cool. Um, but for anyone out there who just appreciates good music quality, but you know, you're not a total hardcore audiophile, I used to call myself that, but I guess since I can't hear the difference between lossless and 320, I'm not really a real audiophile. Nonetheless, it's a really fun project, so if you just want to learn some basic electrical engineering skills, I mean, it's paint by numbers. There are labels all over this printed circuit board that tell you R7 means resistor 7, D1 means diode 1, and it's even got little labels on it so you know which way to face the diodes and that sort of thing, which is how printed circuit boards work. Um, and it's, it's, it's really easy, you just have to know how to solder. So if you look at some YouTube videos on how to solder, then you'll be good to go. And um, I did get a full degree in electrical engineering, so I had a little bit more practical experience to build this, but I, once again, I think anybody can do this. So if you're interested in this, if you want, if you have a specific test you'd like me to run so that I can maybe do something crazy that'll allow me to hear what, you know, the crazy capabilities of this thing, then please let me know. Um, I'm really excited to have built it. I'm just more excited to find out what to do next to really get the full potential out of this bad boy. So this is the O2 Objective 2 headphone amplifier. If you have any questions, shoot them my way, and you can always contact me at CaseyFriday.com. And I will see you later.